July 16th Committee on Community Resources meeting. Um, and uh, we are being audio and video recorded. Um, so, Laura, would you please call the roll? Sure. Um, Councilor Sharon? Here. Councilor Goodwill? Here. Councilor Nash? Here. Councillor Klein is uh, not here um, with excuse. So, um, <laughs> unless the person on the mayor's phone wants public comment, I don't see anyone here for public comment, so we're gonna <laughs> skip past that. And um, is there a motion for the minutes from June 18th? I'll make a motion. To so take the particular meeting. time motion. You're moving to approve these minutes? Yes. I and will move to approve the minutes. And I will second that um, Any discussion on the minutes? No? Um, so all those in favor of approving the minutes, please say aye. 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 No objections? No abstentions? Um, so the two bits of business that we have on our agenda are um, uh, Update hopefully from Mayor Narkowitz on the casino marketing study or just sort of filling us in, if you would. And um, and from Mr. Masterson, um, some downtown economic indicator numbers or conversation about that. So whichever order. Sure. And, and what I may do is just give you a quick introduction and then Terry's actually been sort of staffing the, okay. the committee uh, or the, what are we calling it? Sort of the advisory group or whatever it was. Um, this is on the study. So we we, um, we got the go ahead from the gaming commission with a hundred thousand dollar grant. Um, we have a committee, a small or I have a small advisory committee that's been helping us to um, uh, first develop the RFP uh, to hire a firm to do the marketing study, uh, which is kind of the basis. The basis of the application was we are going to be potentially impacted economically um, because of our you know tourism and our restaurants and our retail and arts and culture and concerts and so we need to be prepared so we're going to you know, hire a professional to help us develop a marketing plan and then we're going to use some of the money to pay for that and then the remainder of it we'll use as seed money to hopefully implement the plan so um, the committee uh, uh, we did an RFP process they interviewed people we ended up hiring um, Rhyme Digital which is out of East Hampton Massachusetts it's Rhyme just like you would think it's rhyme, and um, uh, they were very impressive, and uh, the, and so they have come on board, um, and now they have been doing um, uh, an, an entire process of going through data, um, meeting with stakeholders. Uh, they're about to meet with the committee again, and so I'll let Terry turn it over in terms of what rhymes looking at. Obviously, we haven't. The plans supposed to be completed in late August. Late August. Okay, so I'm going to turn it over to Terry because he's been actually staffing the meetings and working directly as Rhyme's uh, contact point for the city. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, Rhyme Digital is um, working, as the mayor had pointed out, on pulling together a marketing plan. Um, it started, they started, he started to work in May. Um, we um, had some focus group meetings in mid-June. May was also a month in which um, Blair worked on data collection and reaching out to key stakeholders in the city, which we helped him with. Um, and then as we got out of May and went into June, we had two focus group sessions um, in one day in which we had about, mm, let's say, maybe 14 people come, um, in which Blair presented a number of initial findings um, to the participants um, and also had a, had a conversation um, about what those stakeholders felt about where downtown is. Um, next Wednesday, 25th, um, at 2.30, Blair will have another meeting with the Mayor's Advisory Committee on Casino Mitigation to brief them on where he is with the findings that he's found so far because now he's coming to um, the close of the timeline for his project and we hope that he will have a report to present to the mayor um, by mid-August, August 14th. Um, 
and that would conclude you know, his part of the project. Um, we've been very happy with the depth of detail that he's embraced the project. Um, we've endeavored to help him as much as we can pull together the focus group meetings, invite attendees, and put him in front of um, key stakeholders and also present him with a lot of data as well. Uh, the Chamber and the Hudson, uh, excuse me, the Chamber and the Hampshire County Regional Tourism Council has been very helpful in providing them with him with the data they have, demographic data, visitor data, the Academy of Music's been involved, we brought Three County Fair in, we've reached out to Florence stakeholders, we've really tried to touch every um, Florence has been very helpful, so it's all been a really good community effort to brief him and inform him. He's very familiar with the area, um, having grown up here, um, and has taken a very conscientious um, approach to the job. So we're, we're happy so far. It's been a good, a good deal. Just to say that the, the meeting that you gave all the times and dates for is not a public meeting, it's not an open okay. meeting, so it's just the steer, it's just the, it's uh, the consultant and advise, and working with the advisory, advisory group. So it's, yeah, so I didn't want to advertise that somehow differently. So, so, um, so there's focus groups and then there's an advisory committee, and how did the, the two work together? The focus groups are just individuals who've been invited to that particular meeting to hear from the consultant and converse with him. There's no formal, you know, um, I'm just ongoing. making sure they're two different they things. Are, they, they, the focus groups are just individuals such as Rich Matowitz or Jody Dole who come to that particular meeting, Pat Goggins, and right. have an opportunity to hear what's going on and offer their opinions. Um, but they're not a member of the advisory committee and they don't play any standing role. So the focus groups are also stakeholders, you would say, yes. as opposed yeah. to sort of a random yes. sample. So um, uh, the owner of 25, um, the store in Thorns, um, she's, we've invited her. She's been very, very good. Um, Chris, Chris, um, uh, and escapes me, I'm bad when I'm standing up. Um, Kathy Cross um, has participated. So, so is the is the is the mission of, 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 or the, of the purpose of this study to form the basis for uh, uh, the development of a marketing plan that would go forward, or will what, what do you expect to be the end product of this report that's delivered to the to the mayor? A marketing plan. The de the deliverable is kind of the marketing plan, and um, and then we're supposed to then figure out how and who would implement it. Um, so I think that's the, the general deliverable, yeah. And the remainder of that $100,000 will go to implementing that? It could, yes. It probably won't be enough, but it would be at least some seed money for that. Um, so for example, if we decided we, you know, one of the recommendations was we should create a, a better, or a, you know, a website for visit Northampton know dot com or something you know something like that then that could potentially help fund that piece of it um, or uh, other things like that so um, but we, but the first step was to develop some kind of a plan um, and kind of a roadmap for what we should be focusing on and who our target audiences are and what are the what are the possible you know ways we should be doing it whether it's through online or whether it's through billboards or whether it's through social media or through you know whatever it is um, I think that's that's our hope is what the product would be one of the um, interesting um, uh, events to watch will be on the 19th of July when the casino commission meets and is on the agenda the agenda is not posted yet the casino will present their marketing MGM will and it'll be on their website if you want to watch it. The public can watch it on the live video stream. And MGA will be presenting their marketing plan, and that'll be something that our consultant will be looking at as well. I feel like it's a little bit late for them to be presenting that. They've kept it pretty close to the vest. Yeah. I'm sure they've had one for yeah. a while, and I think they're holding off, and you know, mm -hmm. um, but that's they're required to try to present that. So we'll be interested to see how their marketing in our market and, through, and 
mm -hmm. broader and yeah so and do you think that'll be clear from I mean what level of detail do they need are they required to go into do you know I don't actually know yeah. I don't actually know but I mean I know that they're part of this gaming is supposed to be economic development and, and tourism and it's supposed to be you know a regional attraction so um, so and again, I'm not sure how much proprietary information they'll share, but they are going to be sharing something. So, um, yeah. So, so is the is the is the hope? Is it more to minimize the loss of customers from existing Northampton restaurants and entertainment, or is it to attract some small portion of the seven or eight million a year that are expected to come to the casino? Yes, the answer is yes. Okay, so um, I mean, the way we framed the application was, you know, we had a study that showed that the casino could have that impact on us, you know, on, you know with the percentages and the dollar amount and, you know, the things that the Kamoyne study pointed out. And so, and we tried to get mitigation just for that alone, and we were turned down as a surrounding community. So this was an opportunity to say, okay, we'll be proactive and we want to go after, we want to make sure that those visitors, those new potential visitors to the region know about Northampton. And, you know, know that if, they got, if they're going to come to the casino, why not come stay in a, in a cool, funky, real right. downtown? A lot of authenticity not a Disney, Disney World? Yeah, not Disney World. You know, obviously we're not going to be doing it that way, but we'll, but again, I think it's important because a lot of our customer base is north, south, you know, it's, it's from the south. That's like a key area that we draw from. You know, it's no surprise that Mohegan and Foxwoods are trying to build a, you know, plant their flag on the southern border because that, that's they get a lot of that north south traffic as well. So that's our hope. I mean, that's how we framed it, and that's what they funded. So, and there's a possibility we can go back for future funding. Um, so I'm, I haven't ruled that out um, that we could potentially do that as well. So we'll see. So more will be revealed. I mean, in, in mid-August, probably when this all you know gets finalized, um, we'll probably do some work around it. You know, some press around it. Maybe maybe not until after Labor Day. I'm not sure the exact timing, but but then we'll really move into phase two, which will be deciding you know what then you know what what the recommended things we should be focusing on the plan, um, and we have to go. We'll probably have to share the original product with the gaming commission, who's paid for it, and because they kind of broke it into two steps, they wanted to see the marketing plan, and then, and then from there, how we're planning to spend it. Um, so, do they have? Do they? Oh, I'm sorry. That's good. We will ask the same question. Um, so, I, I I think this is fascinating. So we're building a profile of what. The Northampton market is like who the customers are. Is that did I hear that right? We're definitely looking at analytics from websites, and we're looking at and they're looking at attendance figures, and they're looking. I mean, all the stuff that the tourism bureaus do now, anyway. Right. I mean, it's not this isn't anything that they're not doing already. We're just I think they're just drilling down in Northampton um, to kind of see who is the baseline customer now, mm -hmm. and. Um, where you know where we should be marketing to potentially in the future. Right. So yeah, so they are doing that. I mean, I'm not sure how much um, you know of that data will be in the report, but we'll see. We'll see. Um, and the, so the information is available right now. I can find out where it's not available. No, it's available through the. I mean, there's certain. It's available if people give it to you. You know, like. Um, you know, certain venues are sharing information. American Express will share some information. If the if the um, vendors will share that, with, you know, will will allow that information to be shared. Um, I don't know where the Tourism Bureau gets their stuff from, um, but um, but it's available through them, and so they're sharing. I think it would just be really interesting yeah. in terms of us discussing our downtown. Yeah. If we have a profile of who our customers yeah. are, well, hopefully then we'll start talking yeah. about it in terms of, you yeah. know, here's the people who come here and spend money, yep. you know, I, I that's think, the target audience. I think you'll see some of that with okay. what Blair comes yeah. up with. And and one of the reasons why Blair and Ryan is also interested in seeing the casino marketing plan is he wants to see who are they going to be 
advertising to, or if he's already trying to figure out what is the profile of a casino visitor. And he's told us that certain age groups just don't gamble where other age groups do. So there's different de demographics right. that will be coming to the casino, and that will drive what they advertise. He also pointed out in one of the meetings that the their, their ability to recruit retailers is also going to be governed by what kind of audience they want to have come to the casino or will be coming to the casino. So, so, that, so I think a lot of that will be, be a, you know, so you'll see some of it in, in his reporting. And they're cool. definitely trying to make it a, you know, a, I mean, they're definitely, they're building a movie theater. Um, I was on a tour, they, I was on a tour of the casino like three weeks ago. And they're definitely trying to make it like family friendly, bring your kids, go to the movies, you know, while mom and dad gamble away at <laughs> the farm. <laughs> you can go watch the movies. Uh, and it's definitely geared, you know, so they're definitely, and you know, Stevie Wonder is going to be the opening night uh, entertainment, and they're already planning some other surprise entertainment as Stevie well. Wonder. Yeah, Stevie Wonder will be the opening night entertainment. So this is again what we said, like, you know, they're the <laughs> largest. Um, you know, entertainment company on the planet, so they can get Stevie Wonder to come to their grand opening. Um, you know, so that so I mean that's going to be what we're up against, and they are going to start to slowly. Um, you know, I don't know how broadly this got out there, but you know, we were um, the the um, you know Look Park has for the past several years had Aaron Lewis. Um, you know who's a local Western Mass guy. He was in the band Stained, mm -hmm. and um, I'm on the board of trustees of Look Park, and he's been doing these concerts. He's had one year where he didn't do it. He was going through some personal issues. But anyway, this year he suddenly backed out of the show. They didn't commit to any dates. They hadn't advertised any dates, um, and he um, and, and he just for whatever reason his management company said, yeah, we're 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 going to take a pass on this year. We're going to do it. Well, lo and behold. Um, MGM has booked Aaron Lewis to play at Symphony Hall um, late this fall. So um, whether it's a coincidence, I don't know, but that's a tangible example of a concert that had been happening at Look Park that's now happening because of MGM. And you can be sure that MGM can offer way more, you know, you can have the penthouse suite and you can have free food and you'll have, you know, whatever, you know, we're paying higher rate and, you know, whatever it is, I'm sure they can offer that. Because they don't need to make money on the concert, you know. They need to get bodies into the casino <laughs> to to gamble. So, so that's like a small already example of stuff that's happened that we've seen. How Is much? He the person who has an education foundation. He does, and he he does like a camp or right. something in the hill towns, mm -hmm. and so he's always done this as a benefit concert, right. and um, but obviously concerts, you know, the concert business is, you know. Stars aren't going to play, you know, the same time in a two-month period in the same region. So, um, so yeah, so that one, uh, so that got canceled. They have been able to book some other shows, luckily, but you know, that was a, it's a something that they had been planning in their budget that you know the Aaron Lewis show is going to bring in a number of guests and alcohol sales and all that kind of stuff. So, yeah. Okay. Uh, I was just curious, is the uh, involved in cooperation among Chamber and DNA and Visitors Bureau? Is, is everybody kind of on the same page about all this? I, I think so, yeah. I think there were some, I know you were at a meeting where there were some questions about the data collection or something, right, right. and I know that there was some delay in getting some of the data, getting access to some of the data, um, but I think that that's been solved yeah. at this point, and all the data has been made available to him. Um, I don't know if that was just a summer timing thing. I'm not sure, right. really, but yeah. But in terms of cooperation, I mean, the DNA has been wanting to do marketing um, as part of their, you know, they've mostly focused on events and on, you know, um, you know, beautification stuff downtown, flowers and things like that. But they, they ultimately they also right. wanted to do marketing. So the timing of this was like perfect because they, you know, this. They may be one of the organizations that takes on something going forward, um, whatever it is, um, some piece of this. So the marketing plan, in theory, is pretty comprehensive. It's 
DNA concentrates on this, chamber concentrates on this. I don't know this. this. I'm not this sure if he's going to assign things like that. I'm not no, sure. Not so much assign, but suggest yeah. how the different parties Potentially, should yeah. work Potentially. in cooperation with one another instead of yeah. there being three duplicative websites. Totally. I think, I think that's going to be the key is that we are going to have to all work together on it. Um, you know, we've got the Paradise Cultural Arts District, right. and so there's a lot of different factors here. And we're going to need to all be rowing in the same direction and, and have a unified, whatever the marketing message is, it needs to be unified. Um, and again, I don't think we're looking for, like, I don't know that we're looking, this isn't going to be like a slogan or like a West Mass or, you know, any of those kind of things. That's not what we're looking for. I think it's, it's more, um, it's different than that. It wasn't just like, give us a logo or right. a slogan right. and we'll just keep saying it a million times. Um, so it's, I think it's going to be a little more deeper than that. But is there some branding element to it? I'm not sure. The um, consensus of the, the um, focus groups was that that's something that should be looked at um, in terms of what's the message and what's the brand. And um, so the consultant is going to you know, factor that in to what he recommends. But likely that would involve, you know, then that would be an action step as part of the report. Not, that we're not paying him enough right. to do that. Yeah, so, right. exactly. yeah. Um, okay. but they do, they do do those things. Ryan does, does those things. One of the interesting things I think he's gonna be able to deliver to us is with the budget that we have is to tell us where, who we need to advertise and market to and in what ways to fit the budget that we have. And he's certainly going to opine on some of the other topics, but it's going to be good to know, like you're saying, who, who goes to a casino? Who's going to be a gambler? Who's just there for the food and the entertainment? And who is going to um, not come here to go there? Um, so I think, I think his report will be informative in that, in that regard. into just giving some some, some stats we, yeah. we don't like just again he does we've been doing the um, indicators on an annual basis a year-end basis so yeah. we're still in the middle of the year but I think he's pulled together some stuff big year um, as of the end of 2017 we had a six percent vacancy rate we had 14 vacant stores out of 232 stores we had 17 new arrivals with seven departures, and of the um, occupancies, 14 storefronts were vacant, were be occupied. Um, so that's consistent with the year before, which was 2016, where the vacancy rate was 6.8 percent. So far, for mid-year, year-end 2018, um, there's a lot of some interesting and positive things to talk about. We have two new arrivals. Tim's books came to 90 King Street um, in winter, early February, March. And then a little bit out of the downtown district is the Anytime Fitness opened up in the, I think it's 24 King Street space. It had been empty a long time, so that was a positive. You know, it's worth mentioning, even though it's a little north of the downtown border. Um, Coldwell Banker Upton Massamont opened up offices at 112 Main Street. Um, and they are, as a matter of fact, tomorrow morning the DBC will have their, D, their DNA will have their DBC meeting there tomorrow morning. Um, and then there's six emerging arrivals or expansions to site. Um, there, the Sixth Strong Avenue, the Kathy Diner space, which has been empty for a long time, is going to be um, hopefully a tea and coffee operation, and it seems to be a substantive project that's involved a lot of interior renovations to the building and I met with the um, business owner and the owner of the property and they're pretty committed to also improving the exterior property around the, the diner as well. Um, Nine Pearl Street which is the Gleason's camping space if you drive by it you can see there's a huge build-out operation going on in there and that's going to become a brew pub called Progressions um, and it's 7,000 square feet which I think would be a real, real exciting asset for the downtown. Um, 
There is a spa and massage operation advertising at 30 Strong Avenue. And what's uh, interesting is that to note is that too has been a spot that's been empty for a while. So the Kathy's Diner space is filling up and 30 Strong Avenue is filling up. So Strong and Pearl with progressions, you see that whole section of downtown where you sort of had some empty spaces for a while are now filling up, which I think is great to see. Um, 88 Main Street where Essentials was, um, is now has advertising the windows for Yokohama Noodle, which will be moving in. I think that's gonna be really great as well for, for, for Main Street. Um, also, very excited to see that the Blue Marble store in Thorns is moving from the second floor down to the first floor and expanding their presence and they're taking the space that was vacated by Manella um, just about a month ago. Um, and again, you see space becomes empty and someone is coming in to, to fill it. Um, and I think what's also emerging is Forget Me Not Florist is going to be coming out to 114 Main Street and consolidating and maybe expanding from their presence at Station House Plaza and from within Thorns. So you have um, six emerging arrivals or expansions. Um, we've had five departures, which is Manila, as I mentioned, from Thorns. The Bonney spot at 18 Main Street um, from earlier this year. Uh, Backyard Birds at 15 Strong Avenue. Adams Jewelry. Um, and then Happy Valley is in the process of, of having a farewell sale. So it, I, I think there's a lot of good to be seen here and um, it seems pretty consistent with the last two years as well. Um, it's, I don't know that I can say there's any one time of the year where there's more or less, but you still want to wait till the end of the year to see how you know a lot of it shakes out and then be able to come up with more firm numbers. But this is a pretty good um, detail on where it is now. Which spot is for them, forget me not going into? They're it's going. Uh, they're going where the um, Great Dog Spot uh, was, right? right? Yeah, yeah, the dogs. Yeah, that's not right. Is that what it's called? Great right. Dog. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Grateful Hounds. Yeah, yeah. Good Dog Spot. It's the Great Dog Spot. Yeah, Grateful Hound. Right. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So it's, we're seeing like these interesting spin-offs from Thorns, where yeah. people are spinning out of Thorns and uh, onto Main Street. Which is good because that's sort of I, I, my understanding is that was sort of what was the hope that Thorns would sort of be an incubator mm -hmm. for yeah. Yeah. businesses to move out. Yeah. Because Essentials and um, Strata mer then merged, right. excuse me, but they mer they took similar space together right, um, right in on Main Street. Right. Do we know why the noodle shop went into that um, that spot as opposed, where they have to build out a kitchen as opposed to a place that already had a kitchen? I talked to the, I've met with the builder and the, and the designer of the project and the broker and um, I think it would, I mean, oddly enough, it, it was, I mean, back in the day it was where the Woolworths um, lunch counter was, uh -huh. um, oddly, and like to go far enough back, there used to be a restaurant, I mean, it's far back, but I think for the size, they really wanted the size space and the visibility. Uh, they wanted that like front seat to Main Street, um, and frankly, there's not a lot of other spaces. Um, you know, like the former Spoleto space, for example, doesn't really have kitchen equipment, or I mean, plumbing was cut off, and there's so there, it, that would require it's a much bigger space to require a bigger build out. So I think it was a combination of rent and um, location, and uh, yeah, so. We're just glad it's filling up quickly, and it's going to be quite beautiful, judging by the plan that I saw. Um, they have to build handicapped accessible bathrooms, and they're building out the basement, and um, but it should be quite nice. I don't know anything about the food, or but you know, I know noodles are a thing for people. Ramen noodles are a thing. They are so, a thing. Um, so we'll see. And they're going to—they're planning to have like sort of stools in the window, uh -huh. you know? and that's if you've ever in that window, like that's a pretty. You're you're right. Yeah, front row on Main Street. So, so we'll see. I should also add that there's, um, Terry's been mentioning about the emerging businesses. There's also several spaces that have been leased for uh, uh, retail marijuana as well. So, um, a couple of places on Pleasant Street. Uh, well, one's for medical, one's for um, recreational, uh, and one in the Talbots Plaza, 
and some others that are looking around as well. So that's a whole other element to um, where we may see some vacancies also fill in. Can I ask you a question about the Talbot's Plaza one? What, um, so it's 200 feet from a school and is that, how is that measured and from what border of the school is that? Um, it's measured from the corners of the property line. Mm -hmm. So um, yeah, so it would be from the corner of the Talbot's Plaza to the to the closest corner of the Bridge Street School. Um, so and that was measured. Yes, it was. Because I feel yeah. like I'd heard about that plaza being one of the only being sort of the the boundary or where the ex an exclusion would start, and so I was sort of surprised huh. that. Um, yeah. Um, so far, the only one we've run into that's triggered anything has been the um, has been on Pleasant Street um, because of the Heck Academy. Yeah. So um, there have been someone looking actually at the beehive sewing space as a potential portal, but that whole building is disqualified because of the, the you know tip to tip the two right. measures less than 200 feet. So unless Heck Academy becomes something other than Heck Academy, which I know they're looking at in the future, but yeah, so that one because when you think about it, you've got the um, you know, you've got that plaza, then you've got a ton of other structures between there and the school. I mean, you've got historic Northampton's right. multiple properties, you've got the Valley CDC project, and you've got that other residential project before you get, so it's... Right, I just don't know if it's as the crow flies or if it has to follow some other... They did actually clarify it when they issued the final regulations, and it was sort of measured from the sort of the two closest points of the property line to each other, mm -hmm. um, which they hadn't clarified. Because originally, the beehive sewing space was fine because it was, wasn't 200 feet. It was no. more than 200 feet. But once they moved it to the edge of the property, um, then it disqualified it. Yeah. So we can recheck it, but I'm fairly certain that folks have did that measurement already or had planning to do that measurement. Sorry, I feel like someone else had a question, but I'm not going to say, yeah, go ahead. That was a great question, thank you. Um, has the gas moratorium been impacted like with the, the new noodle place? Has it been a barrier? I, I'm actually surprised that, unless well, they're using like electric. One or, of the craziest things I've heard is that the, um, the brewery um, oh, is, yeah. is putting in an oil furnace because that's, they need a, they need a heat source, uh, you know, a, a commercial grade heat source. So they are putting in, I guess, an oil, an oil burning furnace. I know. So um, that's my understanding anyway. That's, at least that's what Louis said they were specking out. Um, haven't heard about impacts of other restaurants. Um, you know, I don't know uh, whether they were planning to have gas or not for the noodles. I don't know if that's a, I'm not sure. Are those, I don't even know how they're prepared. You usually need high heat. High heat, so I'm assuming they're going with electric, would be my guess. Because I know, yeah. I know it impacted that new building up in Florence. There was discussion of a restaurant going in there and yeah. and it ran into the moratorium. Yes, yes. So um, I, I, I think, I mean, most people have been able to work around it with electric, you know, heat pumps and things like that, but for cooking, you know, for commercial grade kitchens, usually gas is prepared. Yes. Um, I know we've double checked on a few places to make sure that they haven't taken the meters out, you know, so like, I think there's still a meter at Stilettos, I think I have to recheck that, so there's a still service to that building, because that would, again, make it really challenging if you didn't have gas for a building that large, so, yeah, so that's, that's the only anecdotal evidence I've heard has been that one, um, situation with the brew, brew pub. Mm -hmm. um, and again, I don't know, probably they would have chosen gas, would be my guess, just because that's the most right. common sort of mainstream. So. I feel like that alone is a good economic indicator that never, you know, despite no doubt about it. that, yeah. they still believe it, it makes sense to have a business here. No doubt about it. Yeah, and there's no doubt about it. It's just ironic that they go to oil. Yeah. That's sort of not the direction we're hoping right. for. It's not the carbon um, footprint change we're looking for. Exactly. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. there's one other, um, I was also going to say we, we did, um, 
I don't know that it probably would turn up in the in the end of year report, but I'm I know for our for the last quarter of the fiscal year, um, our hotel and motel were uh, were up, correct? Um, I forgot what the numbers were, but um, they were both both hotel motel and meals taxes were both doing really strong, like above where they were at Q4 last year. So, you know, again, and, uh, and you know, I guess occupancies, you know, the clarion's been torn down and we're still doing well. So, so that's another sort of positive sign, I think. Um, the, um, the hotel revenues are up 27% since the end of 14, 2014 when the Fairfield Inn opened and then the Clarion closed at the end of 15. So the revenues have just continued to climb. And then the revenues for the winter months, January, February, and March over last year were also up. And that's usually the lowest part of the year for hotels. Um, mm -hmm. So yeah, it's been very positive. Um, and it shows that occupancy at the Fairfield Inn is very high and um, room rates are also very healthy, which is also a good sign that there's a demand to meet those room rate numbers. So yeah, that's... Uh, Councilor Nash, did you say? Yeah, it, uh, so in terms of these these rental properties that, um, I'm trying to think how to phrase this, there's property owners that we are hoping will rent more properties, if you know what I'm saying. It has these these property these where these new businesses are going in um so mr mr short a number we're hoping that he rents more of his downtown properties are some of these properties his um i can tell you that um two of them that are involved in cannabis are his okay um, and i can tell you so um and yeah so two of them are and I know that he also has some, there's also um, um, some final negotiations on the grub space on Pleasant Street as well, around right. another tenant moving in there. So interestingly, yeah, the, the, um, the new cannabis industry has, and he also owns the Talbot space, that's his, I mean, he owns the that Talbot. Is? What's that? I do not know. Yeah, Eric owns the Talbot Plaza. Um, so that's one of his. Um, the Marinello Beauty Supply is that that's his yes yes so where the or Marinello Beauty School is that's right. his property um, and um, and then I mentioned Grub which is not marijuana but so at least two of those and there was other um, you know they were also looking at his space um, behind Urban Outfitters because he's got some office and stuff back there but but at least two of those. Um, are his property, at least three of his properties are, are um, you know, sort of in play right now. That's great. Yeah. So again, you know, they have a lease there, but they still have to get a license, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so. Glad we could change our economy to suit his needs. Um, yeah, um, good question. Yeah, good question. Uh, I, I know that the Spoleto space um, continues to be one that there's been focus on and people looking at. Um, it's just a really, it's a large space and it needs a serious build out. So I think it's just really, uh, and the rent is, even though the rent has come down, um, it's still, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a big operation. So um, there have definitely been people talking about it uh, and in negotiations, but nothing yet. So when, when you look at that block though, in the last year, you had the well, Potassity Lennox open up and it seems to be doing really great. And then you had a new investor by 32 Main Street, which is just down the block, where Theory Skateboard went, and that investor upgraded the two or three apartments above Theory Skateboard. And then it's not reflected here, but it will be later on, is that there's new owners of Vera Cruzana across the street. So when you look around some of his properties, you can see that there's good things happening. And you need to look at the overall picture of, of what's you know going on. The art galleries that are on that section of Main Street are still there. So it's it's to me, um, you know, it's it's the totality is all very good for the downtown. And you know, we, we hope that his properties do get full and we're willing to help them any way that we can, but it's still you know, a certain percentage of the total picture. Um, 
where the rest of it I think is very positive. But no doubt, these are definitely the longer term vacancies. I mean, most of the other properties are, as soon as there's a vacancy, there's people waiting to move in. Um, and I think that's just a philosophy of him, of, you know, his philosophy. Some of the other landlords, you know, they wanted to get somebody back in, like the, the essential space. Um, but that's owned by, I guess, an investment group in Springfield. And so they wanted a tenant in there right away. So. Um, and he's sort of a longer term investor, I guess, would be the way to describe it. So, yeah. Thanks. Yeah, I had a question about the vacancies, too. It's actually a, a, an arts question. I know there have been conversations off and on about, uh, I assume involving the Arts Council at some point, mm -hmm. but, uh, approaching uh, owners of long term vacant space about temporary pop up type of mm -hmm. art installations in their front windows. Is there any any more recent conversations about any of that? Some 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 cities. It, of course, it depends on a cooperative landlord. But yeah, this is, I've seen play, I've seen that happen. And yeah, and and I know that um, I know that there was one uh, during the first night. Um, the Arts Council did a pop up in one of the spaces. I want to say, I mean, it was sort of in the neighborhood of I don't know, maybe been Hemp. It might have been Hempis. What, whatever was in there before yeah. Hempis, but they they had done one like pop up mm -hmm. thing. So I remember it was like um, like rock and roll bands mm -hmm. or something, um, and they did yes. a whole they did a whole exhibit. In. So I mean I know that they've done it. Um, again I think it's the, people say that, but then when it comes time to like the, is the landlord going to let you do it? Um, uh, again that doesn't seem to if you've been by the windows of um, those prop that property it tends to be advertising for. Iron Horse Entertainment Group. Um, so, uh, yeah, it's an ongoing issue about trying to involve um, Mr. Shore more into the downtown arts culture life. So, yeah. But you're right, and, and I know Springfield does pop ups in the, in the um, Springfield has done pop ups in the, in the holiday season and has actually invited Northampton Store to go down and do pop ups down there. So, um, but yeah. Luckily, we have other. We do have other spaces and enough other, you know, stores that are willing to do arts night out and offer right. space. So, um, yeah. Anything? Anything else? No. Very helpful. Thank you both sure, sure. very very much for coming. Yeah, really. Okay.